hey guys and welcome to another video. Today's video, as you can tell from the title, is going to be a single review, a type of video that I have not done on this channel for a very long time, so please go easy on me. <laughs> but the book I have chosen to talk about today is going to be Experimental Film by Gemma Files. I recently hauled this in a horror book haul and now that I've read it I can finally give you my thoughts on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to give you a brief spoiler-free synopsis and then I will talk about the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like so much because there was one or two. So experimental film, as you've probably guessed from the title of the novel, is all about the experimental film industry in Canada. It's sort of a very niche market and our main character is called Lois and she is a film history teacher who specializes in experimental film. Now Lois doesn't actually like her job all that much but she really likes to do research and through her job she is given a research grant to look into this long dead female cult experimental film director called Mrs. Whitcomb. Think sort of night film by Marisha Pessel. While doing her research she stumbles across some unreleased movies by Mrs. Whitcomb that all deal with the sort of myth and fable of Lady Midday. Now the Lady Midday myth is all about this god woman who would sort of stand in the fields as farmers did their work and offer them a glass of water and if they accepted the water uh, she would kill them for not apparently recognizing her godliness uh, but if they turned down the water and said thank you she would let them live. So it turns out that Mrs. Whitcomb has made a lot of experimental movies about this myth and when Lois sits down and watches one of these movies, well, wackiness ensues, basically. So that was the end of the plot summary. I realise it was a bit long, uh, but a lot happens in this novel. Now I am going to talk about the things that I liked and didn't like. So the first thing I will say that I really enjoyed about this novel was the central mystery and its sort of combination of ghost story and folktale. I thought that was a really interesting take and I felt like it really layered the story because not only do we have Lois uh, researching Miss Whitcomb, we have Miss Whitcomb researching Lady Midday and it's sort of layered in a way where it sort of feels like there are two central mysteries happening in the story. And another thing that I thought was handled really well was the characters and sort of the dynamics between them. In this story we basically get our main character of Lois, uh, we also have her husband, we have her mum who basically spends the entire novel nagging, but then we also have her son and it's revealed early on that our main character's son is autistic and I felt like the author really did a great job of representing not only what it's like to live with an autistic child, uh, but the sort of feelings that you might have if you are the parent of one. I don't think it's specifically said where her son falls on the autistic spectrum, but basically he can only communicate really through TV quotes and there are a lot of references to Disney movies, uh, which I find quite entertaining, and about how our main character is able to communicate with her son through those mediums. And I like that in a book all about film, uh, there was lots of film references. But what I like most about this dynamic is that we really get into Ruth's mind about how she feels as she sort of goes through the motions about how she loves her son so much but because of her son's condition he is probably never going to be able to express that love back to her and we find out that that is what she really wants. She wants to be told that her son loves her but because of his condition we know that's not going to happen so it really goes into the intricacies and the feelings of what it's like to raise an autistic child and I thought that was really interesting. It's not something that I've read about in a book before and especially for a sort of horror supernatural mystery uh, I felt like it was really deep and it is really pushed to the front of the novel. In terms of the negative for the novel I will say that it does sort of drag in a few places. Uh, it's not a particularly long novel, I think it's less than 350 pages, but there are one or two points where I sort of wanted it to move on and get going a bit quicker. And when it came to the finale, it's not that I was really disappointed, but I also sort of feel like she set up a lot of intricate plots uh, throughout the novel and then just sort of ramped them up to 10 uh, when we got to the end. And then the other thing that I didn't like so much was we sort of get a human antagonist to go along with the supernatural one. It's this character called Richard who is gay and he's the only gay person in the novel. I didn't find it particularly problematic that he's the villain. Uh, gay people are allowed to be villains, obviously. Uh, equality works whichever way you want it to, but I did find him to be a bit of a moustache twirling villain. He was very over the top and I definitely feel like he fits certain stereotypes about the gay community and there are one or two comments that our main character makes about him that made me sort of think like, hey, you know, it's not problematic that he's the villain, but just leave leave those comments alone. I just didn't really feel that he was necessary as a character and I would have preferred to spend more time on the supernatural antagonist and the mysticism surrounding that. I think when I first rated it I gave it a free three and a half stars uh, but now looking back I would probably move that up to about a three and a half or four. So yes I would recommend this book and I probably will check out more by the author. In fact I hear she has some books about gay cowboys so there you go. 
So there you have it. That was the end of my first single review. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you managed to slog it out through the entire video uh, in the comments below, let me know what your favourite ghost story is that you have read. And I shall see you soon with another video. Goodbye.